Hey, Barb, how are you doing today? Hi, really good. How are you? Good, good. You're looking very healthy. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's just makeup, that's all. <laughs> I'm I'm looking at us side by side and thinking, hey, you look like you've got some sun. And I look <laughs> like I've been, you know, hiding underground all winter. Yeah. No, it's amazing what makeup can do. <laughs> I uh, I ordered some makeup online. Uh, it's it's coming. I don't know oh, where, yeah. but I'll uh, I'll I'll make sure to use it on there. Here, next. I'll show you how white my neck is. How about that? <laughs> Hold up your arm like yeah. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I'm. Yeah. But now you can also see all the wrinkles. <laughs> 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 oh man <laughs> life in the fast lane hey yeah really i can see too i'm gonna have to change that dog picture behind me you're probably getting sick of seeing that <laughs> not at all well and, and i was thinking i should maybe move around my you know move some of my beer beer steins down to the lower level of my thing. yeah well and at least sarah looks very youthful in that picture Oh yeah, yeah. These are, these are my daughters. Here's here's the other one. Wow, that's their uh, their graduation photos from from a very long time ago. So yeah, she does look youthful, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But today, Barb, we wanted to um, just do a little a little video to put out there for all those folks who have been joining us on our crochet along. Exactly. That's been so much fun, Cynthia. I've really been enjoying it. I'm just looking for my suit somewhere around here. Um, what a fun project that's been. Yeah, yeah. Um, we so we so just to recap, we picked uh, three patterns from Church Most Yarns and Tea, and we yeah. said, you know, pick one of these patterns and crochet along with us, and we'll provide some, you know, little little tutorial tu tutorial videos along the way. And so uh, we did some videos where we showed everybody how to get started on the baskets yeah. and the pouches and the crossbody bags. And, right. Uh, yeah. So let's do a let's do a little show and share. What have you been working on? Sure. Well, here's the bottom of mine. Now, do you know which side is the right side and which side is the wrong side? I was thinking that might be something good to tell people about. So. When I was doing crochet with Prudence Mapstone way, way back, and we were doing scrumbles, she always said, too, that, you know, you can kind of tell because um, sometimes on the right side, it'll want to curl uh, and, and kind of like, um, yeah, like the edges will want to curl up on the right side, whereas on the wrong side, the edges want to curl away from you. Can you see that? And so that's, uh, that was always kind of stuck with me. And then um, when you're doing that turning round, uh, that's going to create just a bit of an edge that will help you when you start to build up the sides, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, I started the, so I, I did the turning round on my basket. And for the first few rows, it didn't really, you know, like it just sort of curled whichever way it wanted to. But then once you've got, you know, once you've got an inch or so built on it, then you can start to kind of pinch it in and form it the way you want it to go. Right. Yeah. Massage it a bit. Yeah. And then I've, uh, I've made mine to just cover over this vase. That fits perfectly, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. I just kept, I just kept trying it on as I went along. Yeah. Yeah. So, what I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to make a, a placemat or a little basket. Yes. So you're using the BC Garnolino, right? Yes. Yes. And I really like this yarn. You know, it, um, I've used lots of linen before. And linen can be a little challenging to work with because, you know, it's kind of stiff, right? It can be a little bit like knitting with wire, sort of. Uh, but this one's fairly soft. I will say, though, um, I do really want to get a set of those um, sponges for my crochet hook. I'm using the crochet hook from my Addy Interchangeable set. And I love these hooks because of this long shaft. I think that having a shaft this long is so nice. I can hold it in my whole, my whole hand to work with it. 
But because I'm crocheting really, really tight, I find that it's, um, I can't do it for hours on end. I have to stop after a while, which is probably pretty good anyways. I shouldn't be crocheting for hours on end. But I think that if I had one of those little sponges that you push on, it would just make it a uh, little softer on my hands. So that's what I'm going to get next time I'm in the store. Yes, I, I totally agree with you. I'm using, um, I'm using a hook that I got when we were at Maiwa. It's oh, a, yes. Is that a wing one? Yeah, it's a rosewood hook. And I just love, you know, I love the feeling of the wood. But yeah. I'm wearing a groove into my hands from it. And you're, you're absolutely right because you're crocheting so densely with these projects. You know, you, you kind of have to tug on it. And I'm worried about breaking the wooden tip on it because it's quite... Um, yes, it's, there. it's got a deep throat. Yes. Uh, so I, I'm going we're to probably gonna get, We're probably going to get to comments on that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to switch as well. Once I've done that, in fact, what I'm thinking is that um, I'm sort of learning a bit about my own perso personal crochet gauge. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, I'm going to try um, a Clover Amour hook because it has the built-in comfort handle on it. and um, But maybe even go up one size so that the sides of my bag, I don't think the sides of my bag need to be as dense as the bottom of the bag. So uh, I think I might just try and experiment with a slightly looser gauge and my, and my cotton uh, because yes. it might go a bit faster. So you're working on one sort of um, container that you've got your your flower vase in mm -hmm. and what else are you working on so uh this is I, I just finished this last night this is the base for one of the bucket bags and that's 17 rounds of single crochet with increases at the side and so i'm going to now today i'll do the turning round and then I'm going to build my bucket bag on top of this. And so I am going to look for a way to just make it go a little bit faster. This is very, very dense. So nothing's going to fall, fall through here. Like I can't even poke, well, I guess I can poke my crochet hook through. But if I put my crochet hook inside this bucket bag, I'd put a point protector on it anyway. Right. Um, anyway, yeah, what so that's... What yarn is that? What's that? What yarn are you using with that one? This is a uh, Barocco Pima 100. Oh, yes. Yeah. And how do you like it? I love it. It's, it's such awesome. a beautiful yarn. The, I think Pima cottons are, um, are grown in South America, and so they're, they're really soft. They're very soft. And yet at the same time, I feel like they're really strong, too. Is that one kind of uh, chain construction, or is it twist? It plies twisted? This one is a this one is a twisted ply yarn. Uh, it looks like it's got four plies in it. Mm -hmm. um, yep, and it and and it isn't. Uh, but what so what I like about it for crochet is that it's soft because you are you know dragging it through your hands and you know I'm, I'm holding I'm holding my uh, fabric really close to get into the stitch right because the stitches are quite small. So it's nice to have something in your hands that's soft. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that it's malleable. So with these, uh, with this particular construction, the stitches do get slanted. I don't know if you can see it very well here, but you can see how my markers. These are the markers that mark the side stitches. So you know they should be, they should be kind of here, but they're over here because all the stitches have fallen. They've gone on a, on a bit of a spiral. Wow. So they tell you, I mean, at the bottom of the bag doesn't matter so much, but when you're doing the sides of the bag, they do give you some instructions on how to straighten those stitches out when you're blocking the bag. Um, because you are working in a spiral and your stitches will slant um, as you go. You can sort of see a almost like a diagonal uh, line. Wow. Um, so I like, I like the Pima 100 because it's soft and also because it's not splitty. You know how some cotton yarns um, and some wool yarns too, when you're crocheting, they can uh, they can get untwisted and they can start to be kind of splitty when you're trying to work with them. This 
has not given me any issues at all in terms yes. of putting. Have you had a chance to work with Medina? Because I'm wondering what it would look like if it would shift. Yes, so I'm doing the cross body bag. Um, I'm doing the small pouch bag in Medina. And so Medina is this one here. It's a cotton viscose um, acrylic blend that does some striping in it. And it's also very soft. So here is my bag so far. So is that, what is that, a tube? What's the construction? Yes. So you start at the bottom with a little um, oval, just like, so it's basically the same start as this one, ah. except that you, you only do a couple of rounds. So it's a very narrow oval in there. And then you work, you work around, around and around. And this one is, um, this one is slanting a little bit as well, but not very much. So again, here's my marker. The marker is supposed to be on the side. So when I go to straighten this out, I'll move that marker back here and block it nice and straight. But you can see that as I'm working, it's starting to slant a little bit so the marker can be moved inside, but not as much. Mm -hmm. uh, I, so I really like this one. I love it. I love it for the colors. Yes, it's very pretty. Yeah, it's got some, you know, it's got this sort of variegated, stripey, um, pooled, uh, speckled kind of look. And I love the, you know, the rich kind of ochre that's in here. That's why yeah. I that. And the blues, I like the, the blue and the ochre together. That's really nice. Yeah, um, so it's so cool. Yep. And this one, it's smaller. So I'm using a, I'm using for this one. I'm using a 3.5 millimeter Addy needle. So it does have a, a, you know, a thicker handle on it. It's not the comfort yeah. grip that, that you might like. So, um, but it still gives you, it doesn't wear that little groove in my hand. And yes. then the, the metal shaft on here, I'm finding better, I think, uh, for this tight, dense work. So I have to, I have to kind of watch these ones because the stitches are quite small. And this yarn is, um, it's plied as well, but there are, I don't know, maybe um, a dozen. I think it's uh, plied and then plied again. So it looks like there's four plies, but each ply has four plies as well. Wow. Yeah, so, so they're very fine. Yeah. So this one is a little splittier than, uh, than the uh, Pima 100. I have to go a little slower. But to compensate for that, I'm making a smaller project. So yes, yeah, yeah. I, I really love the way this yarn is working up. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Yeah. And then I've got, I'm storing that project in the first um, basket I made with some leftover yarn. And on this one, I held um, Euroflax and uh, somewhere like DK doubled. And then I ran out. I just had a little bit left over. So I just finished off the top in, in just the straight cotton and I built in some eyelets like you, you get instructions for eyelets in the um, uh, bucket bags as well. Yeah, and because that's the thing about church most, they have such great little um, extras in their patterns, right? Exactly. Little details like that that are really, really nice. Yeah, so I, I was able to turn this into a, kind of like a bucket bag with a with a round bottom. So it's, um, it's a church most basket turned bucket bag, which is a reason why you should buy all three patterns, really. Yeah, that's really nice. I like the marled sort of look of that too, where you mix the two colors together. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fun to create your own marl, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, and so you can just take, and that, I think that's the nice thing about working with the linen too, because in, in this one, like, like you were doing, I used um, the BC Garn Lino plus, um, I've got my knitting needles in there, plus some Rowan Summer Light DK. Yeah. And, um, and the cotton just softened up the linen a little bit and made it thicker. So, you know, if somebody wants to create a basket in a shorter period of time, um, adding that linen to a cotton makes it thicker and, you know, 
your work progresses faster. Right. Um, and it also it be really nice too to have two colors because you could take one and you know do sort of a trim edge too, just in one solid color mm-hmm. or the other. Uh, there's just so much versatility with two two shades. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then just the whole fun of creating different shades, like different colors with marling. Mm -hmm. Uh, Really cool. Yeah. 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 Have you had very many questions on the knit along? Have people been asking um, any sort of questions? No, not yet. So I'm kind of trying to anticipate questions. So that's why we're talking about the turning round now. Mm -hmm. Um, Attached to this video, I've also got a little video showing you how to finish off the basket. So um, there's some slip stitch. um, There's a slip stitch edge on it to kind of even off the spiral. And so I'll I'll attach a video on how to do that slip stitch edging. Oh, good. Um, yeah, but no, not too many questions. We have had some pictures posted. So I just want to remind people to post pictures of your projects, even if they're unfinished, doesn't matter. Um, and uh, include the hashtag, hashtag R-C-Y-C-A-L. And uh, okay, we can go look at how people are doing. Yeah, That's nice. Yeah, it's always nice to see, isn't it? It is. I have some pictures too, I forget. Yeah. And so today, you know, because we were podcasting about this, I thought I would wear another crocheted piece. This is the Over the Willamette uh, shawl that we um, that we did as a workshop in the store. Very and, nice. Um, and what yarn did you use in that one? I think this is flock fiber. Uh, it's a it's an old flash. It's an older flash mob yarn. Right. And uh, she created it in three colors there was um uh, i think this is like the sisters colorway so this is amethyst and then i think this was uh for your birthstone as well amethyst is mine and yours is uh is the green so yeah i thought i would put them together in this one and and just pop it on today because today is one of those days where the sun is shining but the wind is up yes so it's just a little cool out there hey that looks so pretty. I did mine in Julie Aslan, and I should have worn it. I forgot completely about it it's at the store, but uh, that's really, really pretty. Yes, and you know, um, I was thinking that for those of for those of you out there who like to crochet, if you wanted to do this shawl, it's uh, it's called Over the Willamette. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. But we have these. Um, we still have a few of those. Uh, gradient color packs from flock fiber called a study in scarlet Mm, and i think this shawl would work really nicely if you just each you you know uh every couple of rows you just went to the next color yeah and um created a gradient colorway and then maybe or maybe like the very lightest color you saved for this little inset uh lacy panel but this is a fun uh shawl to crochet and it um, it doesn't require, I think the, you know, it doesn't require a lot of complicated crochet skills. No, uh, and I like that pattern too, because it had sort of a chart. So it explained kind of where you needed to stick your crochet hook in. That's always kind of the challenging part, right? Is to kind of figure out where the beginning and the end are. Yes, yes. I learned so much. We 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 took that class from our... Uh, crochet one of our crochet instructors named Heather and she taught us all sorts of great little tricks so maybe that's one of the classes we'll have to bring back as an online class that would be great I think that would be a lot of fun to do that project yeah yes Yes. okay well I I think maybe I'll I'll get back to my um my turning round and keep working on my bucket bag and my I'm, I'm excited about the cross body bag too or the little pouch because I want to have something to put my cell phone in when I go for walks you know yes <laughs> that's a great idea okay well that sounds great keep on crocheting and we'll see you uh, soon yeah all right take care everybody bye bye I've just finished the base of my bucket bag and I thought I would just give you a quick uh, view of how to do the folding round. Begin by doing a slip stitch 
into the last, into the first stitch of the row. So slip stitch, let me do that again. Slip stitch is just insert your hook, draw the yarn through from the back and through the loop on your hook. There we go. Then mark that stitch. So to do that, you're just going to put your locking stitch marker over the stitch, slip your hook in, and to begin the folding uh, row, you insert your hook into just the back um, side of the stitch that you would do your single crochet in. So I'm just going to go through one leg, and it's the leg facing away from me, and I'll do my single crochet in there, and continue on all the way around. Just like that. So just into the back leg of each stitch and that creates a little ridge that will stay on the outside of your work and will complete the folding uh, round. So I've been crocheting on my basket and I'm, I think I'm done. Um, if I compare it to my, um, to my plant pot that I wanted to cover, um, it's just the right size. Maybe I can go one more row, but I think, um, I think I'd rather have it just under the edge rather than over the edge. So I'm going to leave it at this height. Um, but before I finish, I wanted to show you how to do the turning ridge on the uh, on here. So I've already done my turning ridge here. You see how that little outline is just sitting right down here at the base of my basket. Um, so I just wanted to show you how to do that. So I'm going to back up a little bit here. There we go. Put my hook back in. All right. So if you want to do a turning ridge, what you want to do is leave one half of your crochet edge here exposed. So instead of going into and in, in under both um, ed, both parts of the edge at the top, you're just going to go into one part. So skip the skip the bar that's closest to you and put your hook right into the center of the stitch and under just one leg, the back leg of the stitch. Draw your yarn through and do your single crochet and then again into the next one draw your yarn through and do a single crochet. And by going into just the back leg of the stitch, you will end up with that ridge that will later just turn nicely and create this turning ridge like this. Okay, so that is the turning ridge that you'll need to put at the edge of your basket. And now I'm just going to crochet up to my marker and then I'm going to show you how to do the finishing. <clears throat> so I'm working my single crochets along here. And I get to my marker and this time instead of moving my marker onto my hook I'm just going to take it off and I'm going to work a slip stitch. So your hook goes under the two bars just like normal. Draw your yarn through and bring it through the loop on your hook. So again you have one loop on your hook. Take your hook and put it under both bars at the top of your um, at the top of the stitch on the row below. Yarn over and bring that yarn over through the, the single crochet on the row below and through the loop on your hook. So in, yarn over, bring it back to the front and pull it through the loop on your hook. And this creates um, a uh, smoothing out of the edge so that you don't get, um, because you're working in a spiral, you could end up with a slant here. And uh, the pattern tells you to do it about three times, but you can do it as much as you want. You can go all the way around with your slip stitch and create kind of a firmer edge all the way around. Remember not to do a single crochet, just to do that slip stitch. You see it creates kind of a nice little braid along the side here. So I might go almost all the way around or I could just leave it right here because you see how it just smooths out that edge. When you're done, make your loop a little bigger like this. 
uh, just to make sure it doesn't come out. Cut your yarn. In this case, I'm leaving about four inches in total. Cut your yarn and then take your hoop or your take your hook and pull your yarn out like this. Um, so the yarn is just coming out of the last stitch. So you're just taking whatever loop is there with your crochet hook, just pull it out like that. And then take your wool needle, thread your yarn onto your wool needle. And now to keep this chain looking nice and neat along the edge, I'm going to weave in my end so that this end gets tacked down just along the edge there. So I'm just going to take my wool needle and go under the edge of the stitch right next to this one. And then I'm going to come back out through the edge of this one, in through here. And now I'm going to go down inside and I'm going to take my yarn and just kind of ease it under one of the single crochet stitches there because I want that end to be woven in on the inside. And then to make sure that it stays secure, I'm going to just kind of weasel it under. Let's see here. Where can I go? I'm going to go down one more row. So my yarn tail is coming out here. I'm going down one more row and I'm going to put it sideways through this stitch and then I'm going to bring it back and go sideways through here. So I'm just going under the bars of the single crochet stitches. Turn it around, make sure, no, it's not visible from this side. Uh, but by going back and forth like this, and I'm going to come under here, I'm just ensuring that that tail won't wiggle its way out later. Okay, and when I feel like my end is in there pretty securely, I'm just going to go up here. Then I'm going to trim it off, but leave a little bit sticking out. And that's because as you stretch, wash and block and fit it onto things, that tail gets sucked back in. So I always leave a little bit sticking out so that it doesn't pop through onto the wrong side or onto the right side. And then you can turn your basket inside out. Remember down here, this is where you pulled really tightly on that, um, on that center, on that center ring to close the hole in the bottom. And I did weave in my end under here but I'll show you again how that's done. So you're just taking your wool needle and going under those bars of the single crochets from your first row and you're just pulling it through to bury that tail underneath there. And as you do it, there we go, as you pull it through, you can tighten it up some more. After you've buried your end in there as many times as you can, then you can just trim off the end. Okay. So I've already gone through there about three times and, and now again a little bit more. So again I'm going to just trim off my ends and I'm going to leave a little bit sticking out because again after washing and using it that end will get sucked back in there. If after a couple of washings it's still there, you can trim it off. Okay, so now my basket is ready for its pot. Perfect. Look at that. There's the only telltale sign that I actually did some slip stitch chains there, but it keeps the edge nice and smooth. Church mouse yarns and tea, they're so clever. Okay, now I just need to get a plant to put in my pot. Maybe I'll just grow some more yarn. <laughs>